Okay, so how did you come up with the idea of starting a medical NGO in Myanmar? I used to work for a French-based international medical NGO as a volunteer doctor, and I've been working in several different countries, including Myanmar. I was fascinated by the culture and the people of Myanmar during my volunteer work, and since then, I always thought about working in this country. When I worked in Myanmar for the first time, I was touched by the warm kindness of the local people. The land is gifted with untouched nature. I saw fireflies dancing in the air at night. Underneath the beautiful Milky Way on the sky. A rare experience for Japanese from Tokyo, I guess. When I was working in Myanmar as a volunteer doctor, we had this doctors on the boat plan and with the, our plan was to find patients living in remote villages and delta, delta areas one evening on our way back from one of those villages i saw a beautiful beautiful sunset from the rooftop of our boat it just left me speechless and suddenly then the thought came to me that myanmar is going to be my second home and i will work for the people here this is my life mission it came to me so naturally, I didn't even doubt it. I, I want to pay back all the great experiences that I've gained during my volunteer work in Myanmar. When did you get a real sense of what your mission was in Myanmar? Actually, when I was in the university hospital in Japan, I started to wonder about the meaning of medical care, and I struggled with it quite a lot. And I wasn't sure what kind of added value I could give to the patients beyond routine medical care as a professional doctor. Slowly, I started to seek beyond advanced medical care in already developed countries. I felt that my job was not fitting me well. It ended up making me lose my confidence as a doctor, and this feeling really bothered me until I saw that beautiful sunset in Myanmar during my volunteer work. It was a life-changing experience which cleared the dark sky above me. After that, I'm proud to say that providing medical care for people in need is my passionate mission. I will dedicate my life for that. The feeling I have is very strong and unchanged. The passion always stays with me when I consult my patients. It makes me overcome difficulties even when I face situations. So from my past experience, I remember an unbreakable chain in health deterioration. So could you tell us about the Myanmar Family Clinic and Garden? Myanmar Family Clinic and Garden's concept is organization of the Myanmar, by the Myanmar, for the Myanmar. That's the really important concept. Because of from my international medical experiences, even if we give them our, our hands and help, let's say that there's a mother with a small child who has nutritional deficiency. They would come to our medical center and get nutritional support. And while getting nutritional treatment, this child would be getting better and better and growing in great condition. And then they'd go back to their village after getting better. But they'd come right back again to the clinic again and again and again because their child would have nutritional deficiency again and again and again. And this negative spiral repeating again and again, is, it could go on forever. So that we'd really like to fix this negative spiral. In a word, I felt it was impossible. Even if we just temporarily helped them out, we realized that we could never get out of this negative spiral. And that's why we created this organization of the Myanmar, by the Myanmar, for the Myanmar. Let them make vegetables, honey, peanuts themselves. It, it helps them have a healthier life and they can nutritionally support themselves. Then we can work together with their community and the mothers because the mothers always think about their babies and their children. And that's the same the world over. They don't have a chance to do healthier things. And that's why we are doing it together with their community and with the mothers in Myanmar. Think about the happy, happiness and the healthier lives. That's the purpose of this group. And they have to realize this themselves. You know, they need to know what they need, what they don't have enough of in their lives, and what they should do for a happy life. They have to think about this themselves. It's their happiness. Happiness is so different from individual to individual and the different level of stage in each country. So we have to be strongly united and to reach in to really have a happy life together. I see. But mostly, they don't have the money, and not even like a single skill, and that's why we have to support them. And then they have to find out about how to do it themselves, because that is self-sufficiency. He's absolutely right. I mean, uh, we're just the support, and they have to do it self-sufficiently, right? Yes, that's right. 
So in Myanmar, uh, you know, so many children are dying from malnutrition, and in Japan we can't really imagine that. So could you could you explain that a little bit to us? There are two big reasons why there are so many infant and children's deaths. Two reasons. Yeah. Well, one is diarrhea. Like in Japan, we would never bring our babies to the clinic just because a baby has diarrhea. But in Myanmar, babies die all the time just of diarrhea. This is seriously re realistic in Myanmar. Why? Because of malnutrition. And there are so many children who die of just malnutrition. Wow, that's terrible. And that's the most basic key of life. Nutrition, and here they have malnutrition. Malnutrition kids will have diarrhea and they have dehydration, and they would just die right in front of me. That's why they they lose even very basic nutrition too, right? Uh, and it becomes a really dangerous situation, especially for children. Really, that's so right. One more problem is malaria, right? That's right. If you take malaria medicine immediately at that point, you can prevent most deaths by malaria. But if the kids don't get the medicine and leave it as it is, it gets in the blood, goes to the brain, and so far, then it's likely to cause death. Wow, that's, that's, really, uh, that's really frightening, right? Yeah, it's really scary. A mother came in with an infant extremely worried. I thought we should give an IV drip. The Myanmese doctor I was working with said it was probably malaria. He did a malaria check. In the meantime, he made sugar water. He put sugar in water. He proceeded to make a sugar water mixture, giving it to the infant. That baby had malaria, so he gave her malaria medicine. Together, spending time that day, and slowly but surely, that baby that was really deathly ill began to get well. And then the mother and baby were able to go home. How many others were suffering and dying of malaria? The big hospitals, about one-sixth of all patients have malaria. Wow, one-sixth? That's, that's a lot of patients. Yeah, surprisingly on average. You have more than you think. One more thing about malaria. The medicine called Croton costs 37 yen for one serving. 37 um, yen? Yeah, 37 yen, about like 30, 30 cents. And that 37 yen medicine, for a baby taking it one day, one serving, it's about 151 yen. That's about a about dollar and 10 cents. And that's approximately the same as the average monthly income in Myanmar. One month is about 150 yen. A monthly salary is 150 yen? Yes, 150 yen. That's about 100 and... A right, dollar twenty or dollar thirty. So medicine is medicine for one hundred and fifty one yen is unaffordable. There's no way they can buy it. So you're saying to relate it to the Japanese person, it's about a hundred times their salary. That's right. The Croton malaria medicine for one hundred and fifty one yen. There's no way they can buy it. They wouldn't be able to afford food, and that's why they don't take the medicine. They go to the relatives, and then they get help from their relatives. A lot of malaria-related deaths are happening in Myanmar. So the Myanmar Family Clinic and Garden, we provide free of charge malaria medicine treatment. Our medical staff will visit the patients who cannot come to the clinic and will give a free treatment. And that's what we are planning to do. I think it will be helpful to save many, many lives. For Japanese helping, sometimes there's nothing they can do to help. When there's nothing they can do to cure them, sorry is all they can say. Sorry, uh, there's nothing we can do. It's un incurable. When their heads are down, what they say that I think is incredible is that they still look up to say, thank you. When I hear thank you, wow. If it was us, we, we couldn't say that. If the situation were reversed and it were me, I'd ask, well, then why are you here? Why did you come? You're here to help, aren't you? I definitely say that. But for them, they always say thank you. Thanks wow. for coming. That's amazing. Yeah, it is great. They're so pure, pure gratitude. And I feel that feeling. We receive that feeling. When honestly, that 98% of a hard lifestyle 
But that 2% of that 98% of that is joy and that joy is heard. That's what makes me want to go back. I want to return. That's why for me, connecting with the Myanmar group and going there to do the volunteer work. You are one piece of a jigsaw puzzle. And that one piece of a jigsaw puzzle, if it fits right, put it in, then all the pieces will fit the puzzle, connecting everyone. And then the way it all fits together, connecting people and in the circle, and in the end, it all connects. So if we all connect, coming back together in the circle, it all returns in flow. In myself, I always feel that. And I keep that feeling, I think. That's why this time in the Myanmar Family Clinic, that's why with confidence, I stand up. And now many of you support, even those of you here. And you all are individual pieces of the puzzle, connecting together, getting bigger communities, and those levels of happiness. So I established this group called Myanmar Family Clinic and Garden. There are so many supporters in this group right now. And you are here to support us as a piece of the jigsaw puzzle. Hold your hand, hand in hand with each other, and make a strong bond. We will never die of malaria because we can take anti-malaria medicine. Why they die easily is because they can't buy any pills. They can't buy the medicine. That's why we want to support them to buy the anti-malaria medicine. Not only support them, but we also have to teach them how to prevent themselves from getting malaria and treat themselves. We should take action with their community for the preservation. And I wish to educate them, to study together with them, focusing on prevention. And if these things go on, that's not really medical treatment. Medical treatment is not only medical care. And that's why we created the Clinic and Garden, getting all the mothers and babies and communities together, wishing them a healthier life. And that's what I dedicate. That's what I dedicate my support and medical care for in Myanmar. That is the real purpose for the Myanmar Family Clinic and Garden. Thank you for your support.